Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to find the derivative of the absolute value of sine x solution. So the first thing we'll do is rewrite the function. So f of x equals the absolute value of sine x. And we're going to rewrite it using a really cool formula. If you have the absolute value of x, that's equal to the square root of x squared. So we can write this as the square root of sine x quantity squared. The next thing we'll do is write this as sine x squared to the one-half. Remember, the square root can be written to the one-half power. And now we'll take the derivative and we'll use the super powerful chain rule. So f prime of x is equal to, so we'll put the one-half in the front, so one-half. We'll leave the inside untouched, so sine x squared. Then we subtract one, right? One half minus one is negative one half times the derivative of the inside, right? It's a chain rule. So we have to use the chain rule again. So bring the two down. We get sine x to the first power times the derivative of the inside. Well, the inside function is sine and its derivative is cosine. So recap, whenever you have uh, a function with an absolute value, you use this formula here and you write, uh, replace, replace the absolute value with the square root of whatever's inside squared. Then take the square root and write it to the one-half power. Then just use the chain rule. So bring down the one-half, leave the inside alone, subtract one, then boom, derivative of the inside, and that was another chain rule. The twos cancel, so we end up with f prime of x equals, looks like we're left with sine x cosine x up top. So sine x cosine x. Then on the bottom, we can, we can bring this guy downstairs and the exponent will become positive. So it'll be sine x quantity squared to the one half, right, to the one half. Now we can go ahead and write that one half power again as a square root. So this becomes the square root of sine x quantity squared. But we know something about this bottom piece, right? The square root of sine squared is the absolute value of x. So this is sine x cosine x over the absolute value of sine x. I think I said the absolute value of x. It's the absolute value of sine x, right? Same thing. So this bottom piece is the same as this. And that's it. I hope that made sense. 